Good evening, everybody. Um, I hope you can all, all hear me. Um, you know, raise your hand if you can't hear me. Just in terms of the quiz, the answers are over there. That's about as much as I'm going to say about the quiz. I think it was actually quite hard, a bit harder than what I thought. Uh, so apologies for that. But if you want to check your answers, they're over there. And there's a couple of spare question sheets as well. Right. Um, so um, events have overtaken us, right? So this is version two of my speech. Events have overtaken us. That's a good excuse for cancelling meetings. Right, now, um, so welcome to the launch of the British Counties Party with our manifesto <laughs> with our ma manifesto to allow us to romp into Downing Street, uh, if not Norfolk Street, and there's a few of them, in a few short weeks' time. Perfect timing. I am ditching my membership of the Lib Dems, I kid you not, and launching this party and the campaign and everything else tonight all at the same time in a big lump of Cheshire cheese. Hallelujah. What do we want? Number one, just one type of county. Number two, the alignment of the lieutenancies with the traditional counties for when your local bigwig opens a new hospital. And number three, no more wrong names. So Abingdon, the county town of Berkshire, no longer to be run by quote unquote Oxfordshire. Do we want more besides? Let's see. Let me get the blood pumping for the campaign trail with a few quotes from a pint sized but very formidable lady who died this year at the age of 77. This lady being Pam Morehouse, half American, half Yorkshire. Um, Pam would have loved to have been here tonight, in fact, should have been here to make this speech. And then send her to the palace. She was a staunch monarchist after we've racked up our votes from Montgomeryshire to Angus. I dedicate these words to Pam, who started a petition now called Pam's County Petition in 2015 to quote unquote, get back the British counties. We also made a national campaign video in 2021, dutifully breaking all social distancing rules and bumping into Dominic Cummings on the way. Um, the video and the petition links are on the map handouts, I am told, if anyone is interested. But I am going to cheekily, spookily juxtapose these quotes from Pam with a few sentences from the About section of the traditional Britain Group website. So number one, the group says on its website, since World War II, serious assaults on our culture, heritage, constitution and institutions have gathered apace, leaving many dismayed and eager for change. Pam says in her video, the counties are part of our history, our identity, our culture. In 1974, they destroyed the counties by bullying everybody and forcing them to have new names. The group says, political correctness and enforced multiculturalism have watered down our rich national character and have forced honest and intelligent people to hide their true feelings for fear of reprisals. Pam says, I'm angry about what happened to the counties because it was forced on us. Certain laws get pushed through and you either accept them or you get punished for not obeying, which is dreadfully unfair when we are a democratic country. The group says, the Conservative Party has failed to defend or preserve anything conservative or traditional. The organic and intrinsic social, spiritual, legal and economic institutions of the British have been undermined and destroyed. Pam says, Edward Heath's government forcibly removed the signs and told us we had only to use the new names from then on. It's like building on Hadrian's Wall and pretending there never was a wall there in the first place. And TGB says, infused with a new generation of enthusiastic and passionate activists, 
the traditional Britain group offers a focal point to promote ideas, discussion, networking, education, and traditionalist action. And Pam says, you need massive education. All school children should know all this, and it should be out in tourist information centres and museums, which at the moment it certainly isn't. You should have road signs telling people what county they are in, just as everybody knew before 1974 and took for granted. But it wasn't just the Tories, and how much will all this cost? So what has happened? Before we look at the why and the how to fix once elected, let us briefly sketch out how they have destroyed the counties. Quick caveat, there are certainly greater experts out there than myself. Pam and I were trying to develop a PhD opportunity in county destruction when she was here, but we hadn't quite nailed it at the time. Anyway, the counties are ancient in origin. A county like Sussex, not west and east, I hasten to add, is older than England. A county like Kent stems, so I believe, from ancient British times. It runs all the way from Dover, over the Medway, past Greenwich, to the border at Surrey Keys. For the purposes of tonight's saga, it suffices to say that the counties gradually arose and evolved from ancient times with influences from significant periods from all of our history, and certainly were more or less settled 800 to 1,000 years ago. Note the connections between shire and sheriff, and county and count, as in Norman Kent. The counties were used as fixed geographic reference points for the law and for the occasional bout of enthusiastic stock stock taking, e.g. with the Doomsday Book. So 39 English counties, if you don't count Monmouthshire, 13 Welsh ones, if you do, 34 in Scotland. Across the Irish Sea, county identity is unaffected, um, but we will campaign that all the same. We fast forward to 1888, a fully vaccinated Jack the Ripper, and the, launch of the, and the launch of the Premier League. My understanding is this. The government in 1888 creates local authorities, local councils. It bases the areas for these councils on the counties. So, for example, Cumberland County Council, or Kirkcabrightshire Council, Glamorgan, and so on. Everyone happy? No need for revolution just yet. Then we come to our post-war period. Brave new world, empire vanishing, debt over the pond, currency devaluation, panic and ambition. Guys in rolled up shirt sleeves writing, or perhaps still dictating, reports. The London counties were the first for the chop in the 1960s. We have Middlesex County Council abolished in 1965, welcome GLC, a ULES star is born, far, far away. We have the Redcliffe Maud report under Labour in 1969, binned and then brought back by the great back enthusiast himself. Yes, Mr Ted Heath, because he had nothing better to do, took a knife to the counties in the Local Government Acts of 1972 and 1973. These acts start coming into force in 1974, as we all know, on the 1st of April, in the morning. The big idea is this. <clears throat> you take the Mona Lisa, you get a dozen three-year-old kids armed with buckets of paint, to make it look a little bit better. And then you come back 50 odd years later to see how they got on. In other words, we do this. We still have local councils, but we change the areas councils cover because people have moved about a bit, or moved in, or been born, whatever. 
But this is the rub. We still call these new areas counties and we still use the old names and hope no one notices that they're not in the same place as before. All counties apart from six are moved. We throw some names in the bin, so it's goodbye Westmoreland and Lanarkshire and Pembrokeshire. We make up some new names, hello Humberside, Avon, West Midlands, South Glamorgan, Central. Herefordshire and Worcestershire get married as Mr and Mrs Hereford and Worcester and we call Shropshire Salop Lad. There's a bit of a fuss. And then in 1997 we get the Lieutenancies Act 1997 which gives the government a chance to admit that it got it all completely half wrong while doubling down on the remaining half of the carnage with the creation of ceremonial counties. Ceremonial counties, all pomp and circumstance. Mutton chop armour. Doesn't it make us misty-eyed for the dawn of time? Nero V. A sense of right and wrong. Black and white TV. Ceremonial Greater Wigan. It's coming, I promise. So, 1997, Pembrokeshire and half of the rest make a dramatic comeback. Hereford and Worcester get divorced and go back to Mr Herefordshire and Miss Worcestershire Sauce, but without most of her detached parts. Rutland finally tells Leicestershire where it can shove its shrievalty. Humberside and a few others get abolished. Great Wigan lives on. And Salop, of course, because they love consistency, goes back to Shropshire. Lad. Now, two things in the world are guaranteed to make me laugh, no matter how much I have to watch the BBC. Number one is the thought of David Icke, who I'm sure is a very nice person, talking about giant lizards. And number two is the thought of the Welsh preserved counties. Imagine I suddenly wave my arms madly in the air or say something very rude and you all simultaneously vanish while remaining at the same time all still in the room. So, in 1997, South Glamorgan, and so on are simultaneously abolished and brought back as the Welsh preserved counties. Poor old Wales. It really has borne the worst of this callous festival of indigene, internecine mockery that we have witnessed. And that is saying a lot. So we have at the moment, where's a good fact checker when you need one? Not one, but seven different types of county. Traditional, hurrah, slash historic, slash geographic counties. The real things. In other words, the counties. Then we also have administrative counties, or admin counties for short, then ceremonial counties, postal counties, I think, in Wales, preserved counties, in Scotland, registration counties, and also city counties. Even last year, 2023, Cumberland and Westmoreland make a sudden reappearance as areas for local admin, but not as ceremonial counties. Alston, up in the hills, for example, is now simultaneously in Westmoreland for admin and Cumberland as a traditional county because it still exists. Listen on. And some other place, beginning, beginning with C, which I am not even going to say because I am not saying anything rude after all. And we haven't yet mentioned regions. So why? Why has all this happened and why do the counties matter anyway? Why have they been destroyed, or confused, as some might say, because the counties, as we all know, still exist? Why the destruction? Was it, was it really just one big leg pull? You can drive through the forest of Boland, see all the white roses on the Welcome to Sladeburn signs, while knowing that this Vale of Yorkshire is now safely pocketed in Lancashire. Great stuff. 
They took Aberdeen out of Aberdeenshire, just for a laugh. Bill Berwick, of course, has been out of Berwickshire since 1482, when the Duke of Gloucester nicked it before going off to nick his nephews and the crown. And apparently Berwick is still at war with Russia, just like our beloved cabinet office then. But the pension does remain firmly in civil servant shire. On to our beautiful bureaucracy with apologies in advance for any cheap and very, very expensive shots. One of our MP supporters, for what they're worth, which is absolutely zero, refers to the dead hand of the civil service and says the devil makes work for idle hands to do. Thank you. We had emails a number of years ago from a gentleman called Jerry Walker, who was himself, I believe, an ex-civil servant. I'm not sure if he's passed, but I think he might have died. Jerry Walker said, This campaign is commendable, but you fail to appreciate that undoubtedly the moving force behind these changes was Whitehall officials and not the government of the time unless the self-perpetuating clique that is the higher echelons of the civil service are permanently removed and disbarred from office, nothing will affect their motivation and this and other campaigns will fail. Ouch. But what is the difference between creating policy and drawing it up? When the MPs go home at night, the civil servants get cracking, right? Welcome. Minister, but what would all the civil servants do if they got sacked? Where would they all go? What county would they all live in? Just quickly on a tangent here, why do we need parties at all? As Martin Crockwell asks. But perhaps we can get into questions of constitutional theory some other time. Number three, from Jerry Walker to Jerry Mandarin. For example, divorcing Harrogate from the other West Riding council tax whirlpools of Leeds and Bradford and putting it instead into a new North Yorkshire, not North Riding, concoction, safe with the Tory hills and the Tory sheep. Another reason is those damnably attractive estuary areas, Merseyside, Humberside, Strathclyde, Tayside, By My Side, Tyne and Weir, Cleveland, Avon. It must be the fish. It's basing public administration with a nod to historic sense of place on a bureaucrat's seagull fetish. That great supporter of Tony Blair, Mr Nigel Farage, who does back us a little bit, talks about increasing urbanisation causing a desire to build administrative centres around urban areas. Reason 5b. Michael Portillo, who interviewed me after Pam died, refers to a putative phalanx of civil servants dazzled in Wilson's white heat of technology, no doubt staggering into the 1970s in search of borders, Isle of Wight, and poets. On the way, they grabbed themselves, of course, a very willing iconoclast in one of our greatest ever Deputy Prime Ministers, Mr. Michael Heseltine. I am so sorry, but it's odd because when I asked him in 2017 what happened in 1972, he said, don't ask me, nothing to do with me, I was just a junior minister, lucky Hansard, that's it. But last year, he suddenly thrust his head into the confessional for American TV and said, yes, it was me all along. It was all my fault. Keep your mace and your Huntingdonshire firmly out of reach. He did it all by getting himself strapped into a Cessna, flying smoke circles, or maybe even chemtrails, around very large housing estates, such as Birmingham and Bristol, and saying, there you go, those are the counties now. He kept Swansea in Glamorgan, of course, albeit West Glamorgan, 
and on his way back home there grabbed Monmouthshire, renamed Went for a bit, for Wales. But here we go, here is the big one, the big one liner that may keep your county pride calmly bubbling if you close your eyes and ears as well as your heart and your soul and your mind. On the 1st of April 1974, the day of the big switch, the Times had a supplement called Yorkshire and Humberside. Pages of white shirts heat. On the last page but one, there is a quote. Magna Carta and Alpha Centauri rolled into one from a government spokesman in response to a question about whether, in effect, Yorkshire was still in Yorkshire. This is the quote. The new county boundaries are administrative areas and will not alter the traditional boundaries of counties, nor is it intended that the loyalties of people living in them will change, despite the different names adopted by the new administrative counties. If Pam was here, I guarantee you she would have got her interruption in first, in that granite Grimsby Links foghorn of hers. It's nonsense. 31st of March 1973, 11.03 p.m. Whitehall. What did you say to him, John? I said, all those changes, the admin only. What did he say? He said, so Peterborough is still in Northamptonshire, right? And what did you say? If that's what you want to believe, fine. Cornwall is still in Cornwall. You remember when you're driving to Dorset or Derbyshire or somewhere and your parents say you'll get there soon. The only way to make councils recognise their traditional county location when there is a clash between traditional and ceremonial county and despite the occasional one-third hearted nudge from the government is to hold a gun at their head and say I'm taking the pickle off your sandwich. We have no money. It will cause, wait for it, confusion. Everybody knows where they are. The counties still exist. Admin only. Except they don't. That was Pam's point. Google, 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 Warrington or Bournemouth or Newcastle upon Tyne. Ask the government if you can find someone to ask. I once got through to an Aisha, I think, about Glasgow or Cardiff or Rochdale. Ask the BBC, what county or riding? Sheffield. Barnsley and Donny. So what's going on? It's what you call a great British fob-off. Our history is being stolen from us while the government issues the odd, the odd denial that this is the case, while giving us a slightly funny look that we've asked the question. Half of us can see the lie, while the other half actually believes the government, or says they do, either because they have Cumbria syndrome or because they think that going along with the sweet notion that the counties still exist, because, for example, the counties are older than Parliament so Parliament can't abolish them, is going to make the job of rescuing them easier. But at some point, they're going to have to man up and say, put your money where your mouth is, Mr Government. But government is older than Essex and guns can swivel round a little bit further. Take back control. Get back the British counties. I'm not so sure we're going to get a, sorry, there you go, there's your Carnarvonshire. The Heritage Lottery Fund emphasises, of course, the need for diversity and inclusiveness for people who desperately want to celebrate their ancestors' British lives in some place that probably isn't Ghoul. Ghoul, since you might ask, is simultaneously in the east and west ridings of Yorkshire, as well as being in Humberside, which despite being abolished in 1997, wasn't abolished at all if you're calling 999 
or for that matter, flying from the airport in Kermington, in North Lincolnshire, in Lincolnshire, in the East Midlands, in Humberside. What's going on? A war. A struggle. We are at war. Not a lot of people know that. It was a softer war in the 1960s and the 1970s, but it's red hot now. I'll come back to the declaration in a sec. Not admin only, just admin. They know best, they want best, they own best, they control best. One more possible explanation. On the invite for tonight, it says, our honored speaker, I don't know what time she's on, but anyway, will discuss the traditional counties of Britain and why their restoration is so important for regional identity, dot, dot, dot. Ah, yes. Yorkshire and the Humber, the West Midlands, but a lot bigger than the other West Midlands. Goodbye provinces, hello regions. It's those EU common market thingies, a 70s progenitor of the new world master planning, gathering steam around that time, which necessitated, of course, the county demolition job. I know at one point they wanted to lump uh, Normandy and Pas de Calais with Sussex, Kent and Hampshire to make a new region called Charles Marsh. <laughs> French seagulls as well. <laughs> Jerry Walker, the ex-civil servant, said Whitehall wanted and wants fewer administrative areas because fewer means easier to control. Eric Pickles abolished the, reason, the regions in 2011 but they abolished Eric Pickles instead. I just loved it from a safe distance when Pam was talking to EU Remainers, and I was one of them once, outside Parliament for years after the great British public issued its advisory note to the government on the 23rd of June 2016. Maybe they're still there. She would very loudly say something like, it's great to see you all campaigning for something you believe in, but the counties were destroyed by Edward Heath in 1974 to please the EU. No fire without smoke. It's not Yorkshire, and the Humber's a river. And I, I haven't even talked about city regions, mucking about with identity in places like Widnes, which is now in about four places. Let me know if you want, to, want me to go through. Or regional mayoralties, Stockton upon Tees, in and out of Durham, Cleveland, and Teesside quicker than you can say, OK, guys. OK, guys. So why do the counties matter? I'm not going to say much here, despite the billing, apart from two things. Boringly, I shall say the counties can be used for a number of purposes. Businesses, local and central government, media, tourist information, museums and historical, including archives, transport, education, health, services and establishment, including spiritual, Charity and community, sporting and outdoor. Your kids and grandkids can still play rugby for Middlesex. If you want me to say more, give me a pencil and a month off to drive the A5 from Marble Arch to Holyhead and I'll write you a poem. So, for the last time, what's going on? Everything is mad when there's a power struggle. I am old enough to remember the Kremlinologists, Kremlinologists, in the 1980s, there was a really funny Russian guy called Joe on TV all the time. People could not work out what was going on behind the high red wall, and it all seemed unfathomable, crazy loony tunes. Someone was dying, and they were jockeying for power in Moscow. This is what is happening in Britain. Britain is dying, right? The power struggle has intensified. Maybe it's dead. An invasion has actually taken place, and I'm not just talking about the beaches down there, in Kent. I would put the date as the 9th of September 2020. We had a mention in an article about the counties in the Daily Telegraph on the 8th of September. So I popped along to the news agents, remember those, the following day to see if there were any letters about the story. Instead, I was gobsmacked to see a picture of the great freedom snatcher himself, Mr Boris Johnson, 
I can't remember if he had a face snappy on or not. Probably not. Underneath the headline, back into lockdown. At that moment, I thought, okay, it's game on. To quote from what I think is, by a county mile, the best speech in Shakespeare. Hamlet, Act 1, Scene 3, Polonius talking to his son Laertes, he says, neither a lender nor a borrower be. We owe a lot of money, so who knows? Again, and this might need an expert, I think we printed our debt up from about 1.8 trillion to about 2.4 trillion in the scamdemic. They must be feeling very pleased with themselves, the 200 year planners with what they got away with. Craven and venal collapse at the behest of big pharma, big media, big money, big tech, big law and enforcement, big everything. Controlled and owned by who? Who controls our money supply? Do they own us too? We need to hang all 650 MPs in place in March 2020 for trying to show up to, to throw 1,000 years or more of struggle for freedom and democracy in these islands. It happened elsewhere too, of course, in the bin. Every single one. How many wars and civil wars and battles have we fought at home and in foreign fields for freedom and democracy? Were we not fighting for everybody else's freedom too? Laugh, laugh, scream, scream. If you stop making things, if you destroy your industry, if you stop being self-sufficient, if you rack up debt to the point where you can't pay it off, you will get taken over. Don't count on inflating it all the way. Your tradition, your past, your names will be chucked out. We were too foolish or cowardly to protect our heritage properly. IDs when you go to vote. Net nonsense. See it, say it. Communist revolution. If that's what you think it is. How have we got the balls to fight, to even recognise when we are being attacked and destroyed? They will try to divide and conquer what's left of us. They will try to call us out. Let's deconstruct county names. Buckinghamshire. What does that really mean when you think about it? You can throw Selkirkshire out too. Look at the names on the new tube lines. Stick a few shires on the end of those names and stick them somewhere else too. But what do we fight with? Pitchforks, Spitfires, JavaScript and Python skills? Lots of money or no money at all? We've beaten off most invasion attempts. What about this one? So, on to the big finish. In terms of attempts to rescue the counties, I really wanted to quote from Martin Amis, who once described the rival camps in the World Chess Championships as being engaged in scurrility, counterploy and vendetta. I will, however, give a shout out to Nikolai Tolstoy and Tony Bennett of County Watch, who love taking down bad signs and putting up good ones. A final note, too, to Edward Spalton of the Campaign for Independent Britain, who asks, what are you going to do with the counties when you get them back? Talking about local democracy, he says, well put, you can't just change the label on the jam jars if it's the same old jam inside. So we use the counties as units for local democracy. That's fine by me. This raises a million hornets in a nest about changing back admin borders and so forth. But in a very gentle sense, I think that's what we need to start to do. We need to use the counties as templates for all areas, constituencies, service areas, local government, the lot. Templates. Not necessarily one council per county. And we get rid of that national debt pronto by making people feel better about themselves. Traditional Britain Group says that with courage, pride and determination, we can say no more and preserve our ancient traditions, peoples and beliefs. Pam says, for my petition, I want two million names on it and I want the British Counties campaign, which she helped to found in 2017, 
to get a bill through Parliament preserving the ancient counties forever. Let's not beg, borrow or steal, but we might have to buy. I estimate that if we raise about 50 or 60 million and go to the civil service and say, can we have our counties back? They will say, thanks for the money, but you're still not having them back. Because no one likes to admit that they got it totally wrong, right? At which point we say, we're doing it anyway. Don't stop believing in yourself when they're trying to destroy you. We don't live in the past, but we don't throw it in the bin. We build on it. We need to celebrate these unique and precious aspects of our history, culture and identity. We need to scrape away the vandal's paint on the county map to restore the original, now and for all time. But first, we need to win that election. Go back to your constituencies and prepare for Inverness Shire, which at 4,211 square miles is the biggest county in Scotland and all the other counties too. Thank you.